Good morning. So we're going to do another video. This one's going to be quick, I think. I don't know. We'll see. But it's going to be about installing Linux on your Windows 11 system. So I know a lot of the content I've been doing recently is about getting rid of Windows because uh, maybe it doesn't support your hardware or something like that. But in this video, let's assume that you have hardware that runs Windows 11 and you want to add a Linux command line to that Windows 11 instance. Uh, fortunately, that's very easy um, today. You can do a couple options here. I would say that one of them is like a dual boot, but that's pretty complicated and you might mess up your existing Windows environment. So instead of a dual boot, we're going to just use what comes with Windows and it's called the Windows Subsystem for Linux, WSL. And that'll let you install Linux as a command prompt. Like you won't get the graphical interface, but you can get a, a terminal interface for it. So it's going to be, um, in my opinion, very good for getting into Linux. Um, you get a full command line interface for Linux. And so it's not like this limited subset of the Linux OS. Uh, you'll get the full feeling of what Linux OS is. Plus, because it's running on your Windows system, you'll actually have access to the disks on your Windows system. So you can access the files on the C drive from that Linux instance. So let's get started. So basically, we're going to install WSL, and there's two ways to do this. You can either do it through uh, settings, actually control panel uh, apps, add remove features. And so if we, I'll show you that really quick. So if we say control panel, and we open this up, and then we go to view by small. I don't want categories there. It's difficult to find things. Programs and features. Turn Windows features on or off. And it's going to be these options down here at the bottom. So it's going to be the subsystem for Linux. And we want to use virtual machine platform instead of uh, Hyper-V. Or I guess that's what the Windows Hyper advisor platform is. I'm pretty sure that's Hyper-V. So virtualization platform and virtual machine platform rather and Windows subsystem for Linux. Now there's another way to do this as well and that's through the terminal. So the terminal is like command prompt. Terminal is a better version of the command prompt and I'm going to sh everything we're going to do is in the terminal. So if you don't have this on your computer because you're running maybe an older version of Windows 11 or something like that. If you're even on Windows 10 right now that a lot of this stuff we're doing will work just fine but um, you're going to want to get this terminal app because it, it allows tabs and to get to the Ubuntu prompt, the easiest way to get to it is through the tabs in the terminal app. So if you don't have it, go to the Windows Store and search for terminal app or just terminal and download it. Okay, so let's go ahead and open that up. I'm going to pin this down here. And actually, we need to open this as administrator. So I'm going to right click on it, right click on this and run as admin. Go ahead and say yes. We'll close the non-administrator one for now. And so what I wanted to show you was you can just check these here like that if you want. You could do this and then hit OK. Or you can run these command lines that do the exact same thing. So here's one of them. This will enable the Windows subsystem for Linux. So that basically checks the box. No restart. In other words, we want to do no restart because I'm going to do two at a time and then we're going to restart. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Should install it. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Also, let's uncheck these. It's, I didn't hit OK, so it's not going to do anything. I'm going to hit Cancel here. And then when these two are done, I'll go back in there and I'll show you they're likely to be checked. So as soon as it's done installing the feature. And let's see. All right, so now if I come in here and I say turn Windows features on and off, we go to the bottom. Subsystem for Linux is enabled. The virtual machine platform is enabled. So both of those commands I did enabled those. So Either one works. If you want to do it in the GUI, that's fine. If you want to do it in the command line, which I recommend the command line. I mean, you're installing a Windows Linux environment, right? Get used to the command line because everything in this Linux uh, install that we're doing is going to be command line based. All right, so the next thing we need to do is reboot the system. Um, and then when we come back, we should be able to resume some of the WSL commands. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll say shut down dash T zero time zero. So shut down now when a dash R is going to be restart. And so that will uh, immediately shut down the system and put it in restart. All right, and we're back, logging back in here real quick. I say real quick, hoping that it'll be quick, I guess. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is, there's two versions of WSL. I wanna enable the second version, make it the default. So as soon as this gets up and running here, let's open another terminal as admin. So we can do some administrative stuff like install Linux and update WSL. So if I say 
WSL dash dash set default version two. Oh, that's right. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, so we did enable uh, uh, the uh, WSL system, but apparently on this version of Windows 11, which is the latest version of Windows 11, apparently has the older version of WSL. So there's two ways that you can update it. And actually, I did want to talk about this because if you had, if you installed something like Docker Desktop prior to doing these WSL commands yourself, there is a chance, I've ran into it at least twice personally, where WSL is like in a weird broken state almost, and you won't even be able to run the WSL command. You'll get some kind of error code um, as an example. I've got it logged here. Let me just show you that. So like as an example, this is the error code I would see. Um, class not registered error code when you run anything WSL. So even if you say WSL dash dash update, it won't even update it because the... Uh, there's something wrong with WSL installation. So the fix for that is after you've done these things, you've enabled these two on your system, you're still getting issues with WSL, you're going to go to the GitHub for WSL. So this is a Microsoft GitHub. And I'll have a link in the video description for this. We'll go ahead and open the browser here. I'm going to go to this GitHub page. And you're going to want to scroll down and find the latest non... I mean, you can use pre-releases if you want, but if you do, just expect there might be issues with it because it's usually not a released stable version. It's going to be like a potentially unstable as they work through things. And so I would go to find the latest version under releases, whatever this green one is. And then you're going to want to, depending on your system, assuming it's not ARM, most people are X64s. So we're going to download this X64 MSI. And we're going to go ahead and install this. And this is going to force an update to WSL. Again, if your system's not unstable, like I was saying earlier, you can just write in WSL dash dash update, and it'll do the exact same thing. Or you can download the MSI and force an install yourself, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and just say, I just want to run it. And it'll start up the WSL installer. Sometime it'll start it up. All right. It's a fast one. There we go. Gathering information. Didn't you already gather information and then ask me the question? I don't think it actually asks you anything except for the administrative prompt, and then it just installs. Like, it doesn't give you any options. It's just going to go through the install and give you no final prompt either that it's done it just disappears so done right it completed so now if we come back over here the wsl version should be the latest so if i go ahead and run that set default version 2 again it should set it and you can see that for information on key difference between wsl 2 please see the operation completed successfully perfect okay so now we're running the newer version of WSL. To be honest with you, I don't really know too much about the difference between 1 and 2. It might be worth it if you'd like to see what the differences are. You can go to this link here, aka.ms WSL2, and it'll explain them. Everything I've ever worked with has always been set to WSL2. I think it's the newer version of WSL. And unless you're familiar with 1 or you have images that only work on 1 or something, it's probably just the best to use 2. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the Linux... Um, um, operating system. We're going to install a WSL image with Linux already in it. So if we say WSL dash dash list dash dash online, you're going to see all of the available Linux distributions that we can install. So there's a handful. You could just do Ubuntu. I don't know what version you get out of this. It's just Ubuntu. Or you can specify a, a version, an LTS version. I would recommend the LTS version. And I would say just pick the latest. Um, if you're into Oracle Linux, you can pick one of the Linux ones. This is what I use professionally at my office. Um, and then there's SUSE if you want to use SUSE. I don't know too much about SUSE. I don't use it a lot. Definitely into Oracle Linux, which is Red Hat, Fedora, and, and Ubuntu, which is Debian. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to install the Ubuntu 24.04. So it's just going to be WSL dash dash install dash D Ubuntu. Um, just the name of it, I think, dash 2404, like that. And this should install 2404. It's going to download the image from Microsoft's repositories, I assume, because it gets it from somewhere. I, I highly doubt it's Ubuntu. It's probably a Microsoft image on their repo or registry. Shouldn't take too long. It's it's a, probably a sizable couple gig image. So it depends on the internet speed that you have. 
I happen to have a gigabit, so once it gets going, there it goes. It likely won't take super long on my system to get that rolling. I think it hits like 90% and, and, and slows down. That's probably the extraction process or maybe the install piece of the image or something. But it'll come up pretty soon here. Um, oh, it thinks there's something wrong with my virtualization. So this is a virtual machine I'm running it on. It's telling me that um, I don't have virtualization enabled. Um, I'm guessing that's because I have the wrong CPU type enabled on the system. So give me a second. I'll fix that. All right, so since we're geeking it out here, let me show you what the problem was on this uh, VM. So I got this GWIN11 VM here, processors, I got two sockets, two cores, and uh, you can see it's it's uh, doing a virtual CPU type of X64, 8664. That's just the default one, I believe, that's picked when I probably picked like uh, the Windows OS or something, but it doesn't allow pass through or virtualization pass through or whatever that's called so um, what i'm going to do in this case is i'm going to pick host i don't know if that's the best choice i wonder if kvm 64 would work don't really know the answer to that one i'm going to go with host set it the cpu type of host um, we're going to hit okay to this and then we're going to have to reboot this system because that change doesn't take place until i power it off and power it back on so i'll be right back all right so finally figured it out so one of the things that I had just showed you was I changed the CPU to host type from, um, I don't remember what it's, X64, X86. And the reason that it wasn't taking is because Windows 11 has what they call a fast, fast startup feature. And if you do a shutdown, it initiates fast startup. So every time you shut down the computer, like totally power it off like that, and then turn it back on, it's almost like a hybrid hybrid hibernation style or something because there must be things that it doesn't it stages and then like just loads in the ram instead of like doing an actual load of those and so um it wasn't recognized in the new hardware because of that and so by doing a restart like literally just re telling windows 11 to restart when you do a restart it forces it to reload things it takes way longer i noticed an immediate difference between how fast windows 11 was loading between a shutdown and a power on versus a restart the restart took three times easily as long so very likely that was the issue i was just now having with this virtual machine okay so with that said let's go we we ran this wsl install dash du ubuntu 24.04 and the first thing it's going to do is ask you for a username that you want to put into this Linux distribution, that's going to be your default user. So it could be like anything that you'd like, something similar to um, what you use on your Windows machine or whatever. And it's going to ask for a password too. The password, I don't, let's, let's test this theory, but I don't know how often you'll use it. You might use it if you want to do a sudo style command. And so make sure you remember what the password is. Because if you want a sudo and it requests a password for a sudo, an ele a root elevation style command, then you're going to want to know what that password is. You're not going to want to you know, forget it and then have to try to figure out how to reset it. So I'm going to set it to my awesome standard that I use for everything in these videos. Okay, password set successfully, and it should drop me into the Linux prompt here any second. And Ubuntu likes their purple background, so you probably see it turn purple, I would guess. And then as soon as that happens, I'm going to go ahead and exit out. Oh, no purple here. Okay, so I'm definitely in Linux now. You can see the prompt style is quite a bit different. And you can see, welcome to Ubuntu, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and say exit. We're going to go back to the PowerShell prompt. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And we're going to open uh, the Ubuntu 2404 LTS new tab. And it should load into Ubuntu. Look at that. With the purple background, because that's what Ubuntu likes. You can probably set these somewhere. I haven't looked it up, but I'm sure there's a way to configure the background. So what I wanted to test was, let's just log in as root really quick. There you go, it asks for the password. So make sure you remember what that password is so that if you want to sudo and do some you know, apt update or whatever you're trying to do in this Linux distribution, uh, you need to be able to get to sudo. So don't forget what the password is. So apt update is just going to update the, the repositories for where it gets packages and security updates and things like that. And apt apt is apt get is the uh, Ubuntu um package manager i don't know what apt stands for it's something i have no idea i literally would have to google that but the apt update updates the the uh list of the what the repositories offer 
it probably also potentially updates the repositories as well like not just like what they offer but if you added one you would want to run updates so that it would pull the new updates from that one you added and then if you did apt upgrade it'll install the latest patches or, or packages that need to be upgraded so I'm gonna go ahead and say yes to these and it should download and install these this is a good idea to do this occasionally because then you get the latest versions of the kernel and any any uh, packages or whatever that need to be updated just like any other operating system it's gonna have vulnerabilities and security concerns and stuff like that that over time people have figured out how to exploit or whatever and you're gonna want to keep that patch just like you do your Windows box shouldn't take too long to do this one last thing I wanted to show you was that you can browse through your uh, Windows drives using um, the CLI here and I'll just show you exactly where that is and how you do that okay so the the update finished took a little bit of time there I had to pause it um, and what I wanted to show you next let's get out of root because we don't want to be in root necessarily all the time if you do PD, PWD you'll get present working directory and it shows where I'm at so I'm in my home folder so consider this like on the Windows side this is the equivalent of C Windows not C Windows C users and then your username um, in the Linux world this is typically slash home slash your username so in this case it's that's where I'm at if you did like an LS dash LA you'll see all the files in here um, I'm doing the dash LA so LS is like DIR, DIR but the dash LA is list all including hidden and dot files like you see on the screen because if you just did an LS or even a DIR because I think it's a, there's an alias for DIR which is a DOS command so that's not traditionally a Linux command but they're saying there's no files well technically there are some files so that's what the dash LA is a lot of times there's an alias of LL which does very similar some in some instances is exactly ls dash la um, but anyhow I thought I'd show you that so now where the C drive is if you want to get to your files that are on your Windows box that's pretty easy you just go CD slash MNT for mount and then if you come in here you can see there's a C drive so if I go to the C drive and say LL you can see the files there so this is literally what you would see if you were browsing so let's go to desert and that's my profile and if we ll here you see all the files let's go to downloads because we know we downloaded some stuff right we downloaded the the um wsl uh, wsl installer which is that msi right there so i'm literally looking at the same files in linux that i have stored on my windows system so if i open up file explorer which it's struggling here because i got a lot of memory us usage i think from this wsl instance but you can see this file here is the same file that you're seeing here so if I were to remove it from the command RM and then that MSI here it should disappear here as well so it's the exact same files all right so that's basically all I'm going to show in this video I'm already a bit over what I wanted to do time wise um, but here you go you got Linux on your Windows system you don't have to install it on some old piece of hardware or do any kind of weird dual booting and you get the full power minus the GUI of an Linux OS but you have it in your Windows environment it's pretty awesome so hope this was helpful for you guys appreciate it I'll see you guys on the next video